Welcome to the Red V TV show, supported by Chapel House for the 2023 season. And this week, once again, we have a semi-final. <sighs> Will we be more successful? Peter, thank you for joining us this evening. Um, Thanks for having me. Tough one this week. Oh. Yeah, it's one of those, isn't it? Um, you can make a case for, you know... We're going for five in a row. We've been over the course. We know what's required, but the last four years with the we've had our semi on in, at home, which is always probably the best place to have it. Um, but you don't want it away, um, do you? Indeed. Um, but you know, this is without doubt our toughest assignment. Um, but if we can beat Penrith away from home, we can beat Catalan away from home. That's the other way to look at it. Absolutely. Um. Should Penrith and the way we approached that game and got the win be the blueprint for Friday night? Yeah, I mean, it's the same as last week. When it comes to the playoffs, um, performances do not matter. An abs a single job. I know we've obviously we spoke on here and other fans have mentioned online in various places that we've maybe at times not played enough rugby. I've said that myself. But at this time of the season, it's about getting the job done regardless of how you do it. And it's going to be very tough. I mean, Catalan have always at, at home had a vociferous, partisan, um, verging on feral support, especially in these big games. And oh, I think that's right, what we're going to word, do. It's all right, you're using words like that from the safety of your Scottish home. Uh, <laughs> we'll be using that if you were going over there, facing them. Yes, these are the words of me, um, not necessarily... Um, anyone else uh, or from Red V or from Dave Howard's bus. Uh, so let's just so put that on record. But they are, I mean, it's, it's not a, a negative, it's a compliment because they ensure that any, you know, quite often marginal decisions go in their favour. Although we recall last year that Catalan's home playoff against Leeds where they lost the plot and, you know, on the pitch and off the pitch. So we can look at that and think, get the crowd turning, um, keep things tight. Um, get some 50-50s off the ref um, and they'll maybe lose the lose their discipline, lose their rag and, you know, then anything can happen, all bets are off. Maybe if somebody told Bernard Gauch, um that if they get to Old Trafford, uh, it won't be a, a neutral referee, it'll be an English referee, he'll forfeit the game because he promised never to play another grand final with an English ref, didn't he? Famously. Well, well, this is this is the thing, and um, I don't know if um, Thierry Alibert Alli is free this weekend or, or, or what he's going to do, but... Um... Speaking, sorry, speaking about referees, <laughs> do you know what Phil Bentham is up to these days? Go on, enlighten me. Helping PGM, PGMOL, whatever, the PG Mol, um <laughs> on how to communicate VAR decisions... Right, okay. I can't imagine that's got any relevance to what happened at the weekend there. Hence your, hence the, the, the cheeky smile on your face, obviously. Well, he's obviously uh, doing a great <laughs> job, is all I can say. The best yeah. of rugby league. You well, don't have any mention of it, of rugby league in terms of football refereeing, except when it goes <laughs> wrong. Well, this is, and obviously Terry Alabert must be doing some sort of accounting job for, you know, um, six counts of seven. Um, a little reference honest, to Peter, the kids. I think Jurgen Klopp is right. I think Liverpool should be allowed to replay that game. I seen your tweet. Yeah, nine men. <laughs> Play it with nine men. Um, we're also going to give Jimmy Lowe's a rematch of the uh, 2001 Grand Final as well. Just, just the final ten seconds, obviously. Just only the final ten seconds. Yeah, with all of the, you've got to get the whole squad who played in that game back together. It'd be like a legends game for the final ten seconds. Can you imagine? Um, you've got to kick from yeah. halfway to win it. Yeah, we're good, and we'll wish them every success with that. But uh, no, I didn't realise Phil Bentham was involved with that. Yeah, it's yeah. Uh, not a good week for that to be to be known across the board. But yeah, um... yeah I'll, I'll read what it said. Sorry, I, I did pull it this morning. <laughs> um, the audio demonstrates a breakdown in communication between those involved and a serious lapse in concentration by VAR. The PGMOL previously hired Phil Bentham, former rugby league referee and TMO, to help make sure their messages are clear and concise. Well, that's going well. Well, that's the thing. Just to briefly touch on that, if you're a VAR, you, oh, you really your job is to watch the match. And you see that, oh, the referee's disallowed that for offside. Rather than, did he think that they obviously thought the goal had been given? It's yeah. absolutely insane. 
But um, let's hope we're not talking about referees and TMOs and assistant uh, uh, officials uh, after Friday night. Because if we are, if we are, the chances are that the um, the partisan home support of Swede decisions in their favour. Yeah, um, Chris Kendall, referee on Friday night. Um, bad omen, he refereed us in the last semi-final we got beat against Lee. Um, yeah, but then again, he's refereed in the grand finals when we've won as well. Uh, 2019 and 2020, if you remember. They yeah. both ended rather well. Plenty of stories about this game. If you're going to retire, you'd want to retire in the south of France unless you have the opportunity to do it in a rainy Manchester seven days late, eight days later. It's no, there's no decision to be made. There's a, no contest. Um, whatever happens on Friday night, Rugby League will lose a legend through retirement, um, whether it be James Roby or, dare I say it, Sam Tompkins, um, born in the side of Saints for many a year. He would yes. also love to put the final nail in Saints' coffin for 2023. Absolutely, but bef before I, I, I give him a little bit of praise, which I think is only fair, the last time there was a Saints and Wigan uh, retirement shootout um, between Jammer and Sean O'Loughlin. We know how that ended up. So let's hope that goes the same way this time. But yeah, I mean, obviously um, Sam Tompkins, uh, as well as being the, the, the one of the, the rectums of Wigan, I think we can say that, because um, it was put out in the public. Um, on By field, them, not us. Yes, he's been a wonderful player and a wonderful servant to the game. Yeah, at times he's goaded the Saints fans, but then I'm sure plenty of Saints players have goaded Wigan us as well, but that's you know, what they're there for. Exactly. Listen, it's a bit of fun. the game would a be a fun. worse place without Louis McCarthy Scarsbrook yes. getting under the skin of Wigan fans. I like pay I like players giving it yeah. back. It shows they care. They it take, it all, they take it all day long, don't they? Yeah. Take it for eight minutes, and then people, you know, clutch at their perils because oh, he said something, they waved back at us. You've been calling him this, that, and the next thing since you stepped into the stadium. So, you don't, but, um, you don't, you don't want Matt Pete, who's a lovely bloke, who everybody's got a lot of respect for. We want Sean Wayne. <laughs> uh, yeah, that that would be um, that'd be interesting. Sorry, but, uh, when I say we want Sean Wayne, not at Saints. No, we, 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 want, we want him to be in charge anytime Saints beat Wigan. That's I think that would mean. But uh, no, Tompkins has been a, a wonderful player, and he's still got it. The same as Robes, he's, he's he showed it a couple of weeks ago to to get them actually into second place when they were kind of struggling uh, level at Salford, put the drop goal over and got the, the clinch and try. Um, you know, he has been a wonderful, wonderful player. There's absolutely no doubt about it. And, um, you know, no disrespect to him, but I certainly hope this is his, his, his last uh, club match this weekend. I um, also want to mention Louis. You mentioned, obviously, one legend will be retiring, but I would put Louis in that. Um, category in terms of Saints, he's probably one rung under robes. I'm sure he would forgive me for saying that. In terms of longevity, and also, um, even though he's embraced the whole St Helens culture, the whole town, um, and the ethos, um, obviously he's, he's like myself. He's he's not from those parts, but he is. He's fully embraced it. He's he's got on board, um, and there's absolutely no doubt he's a fan's favourite. Um, he's he's been a, a wonderful servant, a great player, a consistent performer. And the fact that he's bought into the whole St Helens vibe, the whole thing, and and his, with his family as well, these kids, um, it's full credit to him. And he's an absolutely, as you will, you know, no doubt a credit uh, a test. He's a wonderful guy as well. Um, so we we hope that he can finish at Old Trafford as well. But he's whatever happens, both these guys, you know, I mean, we'll look back with great affection uh, on everything that they've done on and off the field. Yeah, um, you talk about longe longevity. Um, and being a legend, um, he's made 429 Super League appearances. Is currently joint eighth with Rob Burrow. Uh, he'll go one above Rob with a, mm -hmm. um, an appearance on uh, Friday night. He will join. Who will he join alongside P Peter? Oh, who, no. who will he match? Which legend will he join on 430 appearances? Well, going by what you're saying there um, and the, the twinkle in your eye, I haven't researched this, but my guess, based on what you've said there, is his current gaffer, Wellens. No, no. No. Go no, he, Paul Wellens is on 439. Ah, right, okay, go on then. The legend that is, Benny Westwood. 
Ah, okay. Mm-hmm. So left down, isn't he? If he if he uh, plays Friday and he plays in the grand final, he will finish on four hundred and thirty-one. He will finish in seventh place, one behind Leon Price. Yeah, I mean, it just shows there's a lot of these guys that have played a lot of games, and there's a lot of guys in the top ten of appearances uh, who've, who've given a lot of their time to Saints, which I think says a lot about um, Saints as a club and uh, you know the culture around the club, plus the quality of recruitment and the quality academy that we've got there, and always have. If it says anything, James Roby is currently forty appearances in the lead ahead of anyone else. Uh, for, for the record, James Roby four nine four. Kevin Simfield, 454. Four. Andy Lynch, 452. Casford. Uh, Wello, 439. Jamie Peacock, 438. And then it's Leon, Ben Westwood, Louis, Rob Burrow, and Danny Tickle. Some big he's names in, uh, on that list. He's, he's and, an exalted company, and quite rightly, too. And you almost look at that list, and it's going to be very, very hard for anybody to get near Louis and his appearance record. Yeah, that's the thing. I think, considering he plays in the forwards, He's not had too many extended uh, breaks uh, for injury. Uh, you know, you look at guys yeah, like... Well, that, well, yes, don't don't jinx it. Um, I think, obviously, as well, you look at guys like Johnny Lomax, Tommy Mack, Percy, um, you know, hopefully these guys have got a few more years and could potentially get close to that list, depending on the amount of appearances they have, because they're... They're still, they've still got a good few years left in them at the, at the top level, I would say. So hopefully there'll be some more Saints bodies in that top 10 of all time. Yeah. If it shows anything, um, Morgan Knowles is eight, eight and a half years into his career and will make his 200th appearance um, on Friday night. He'd need another 10, 11 years in the Red V. Uh, Mark Percival um, will also make 200 and it's took him 10 years. Um, also, Joe Batsler needs one for 150 in his career. Wow. And lastly, uh, Conrad Harrell needs one try to reach 100 for his career. There you go. There's the stats, Peter. Peter, what football yeah. have you got on the telly? That's Stato. I'm, I'm just keeping up with the football. No, no, that's, uh... who, who have you got on? No, I'm, I've just got it on uh, the kind of goals. Yes. Um, I'm keeping an eye on them all, so uh, 3-1 at the moment for the for the tune. Oh, you've just spoiled it. Everyone now is taking it. There you go. Um, <laughs> I can see you looking up now and again. I'll be, um, finished. I'll be finished. The game's been finished by the time they watch this. Anyway, oh, no, so. don't worry. Um, <laughs> is this the first game this year where we're going in legitimately as underdogs? Since Penrith, yes. Absolutely. And I think, given it's, as I said, all the factors, Catalan are in good form. Okay, they had uh, a, a terrible home performance result against Wigan when they were nilled a few weeks back. Um, but since then, they've steadied the ship. They've got the, the, the points on the board. They've got their home semi-final. Um, you know, they'll have a, a full house, a vociferous, hope, passionate home support, shouting for every decision. Um, you know, they've got a big, horrible, ugly pack of forwards that'll just run hard, uh, for 80 minutes and be grubby for 80 minutes, which is what you want. Um, so Saints will have to be not just in good form, uh, we'll have to, our discipline will have to be spot on, our defence will have to be spot on, we can't switch off for a second, um, and every player will have to probably give his best performance of the year for us to to, to win on Friday night, because the, if this will be, without any shadow of a doubt, our toughest assignment um, since since Penrith, it is a sold out crowd at the Stad Gilbert Brutus, um, but Saints will be backed by a vociferous. I'm waiting for the figures to be sent to me now. <laughs> I think about well, I think about eight hundred um, going over. Um, the stands, the seating area sold out first of all. I think there's five hundred in there, um, and then another couple of hundred have gone on sale. Um, there'll be Saints fans standing, I think, behind the sticks. Um, it, it's 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 a tremendous following for six days' notice. No real direct flights. I know there's people going from Stansted, East Midlands, Birmingham, um, all over the show. Manchester, the ones who got the flights to Carcass on the, a Friday, Sunday before they went up to £789 return. Um, yeah, that's grim, isn't it? It's crazy. Um, 
There's a few of us going via the island as well. Oh, okay, fair enough. A few of us, that, that'll include yourself, obviously. Yes, uh, early Friday morning, um, over to Dublin, mm-hmm. hopefully, then down to Carcassonne, then back via Cork on Saturday. <laughs> a fleeting overnight stay. Um, well, yeah, let's hope... There was ways, hope and, there was ways and means to do it. Let's hope when you're coming back, you've uncorked the champagne and you can see what I did there. Um, yeah. Well, there is a... There is a four-hour layover in court coming back. Uh, <laughs> Whatever sure happens, you'll have a good time. The bar will be found. Or we'll be, or we'll be uh, drowning our sorrows. Um, it is a true semi-final. It can go either way. Um, mm. We will pull up the squad, Peter. Yeah. I just want to say, by the way, that you, I want to concur with what you said about 800 Saints fans at six days' notice going over to uh, the south of France. I think that's a wonderful... Wonderful turnout, um, and I know that the Saints fans will be loud. You'll need to be loud to sh- to drown out the, the 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 French supporters. But if there's any bunch of fans that can, it's guys like yourself, Dave Howarth, Kev Cunningham, TV star, um, and uh, all the guys that are going over. So I know everyone will sing loud and sing proud, and whatever the result, the the, the players in the field deserve a huge ovation, even if it doesn't go our way. For the past five six years, everything they've done. Um, they're worthy of um, every bit of praise that uh, which should come their way. Yeah, um, it is a tremendous following. Do you know what? There be there be some Premier League clubs in the in the football who who wouldn't take that to an away game in the Premier League with yeah. months and months of notice. For Saints to do it with six days notice shows the t- the tremendous backing um, that they've yeah. got. Um, squad then, Peter. Um, yeah. Couple drop out. Joe Batch yeah. is out. Um, George Delaney back in. Is that is that the only change, or does Connie come back into the seventeen? You see, I've been thinking about this since you met you, since you kind of messaged me to to come on here tonight. Um, first of all, it's an absolute gut wrenching disappointment for Batch. Obviously, when you seen the incident, you knew that that was his season gone. Um, obviously, he missed out. Uh, in Australia as well, so it's 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 horrible for him. Um, so for me, it obviously change. I would be I would start Big Al. I think after two games off the bench, I'd start him and have um Sione uh, in the second row, uh, and obviously George Delaney onto the bench. The the quandary is obviously what to do in the back line. Um, if Conrad for me, Conrad has to be as close to one hundred percent fit. For him to be included, um, we've spoke obviously about the, the the benefits he brings in attack in terms of the way he carries, bringing the ball out of defence, and that could be something which is crucial against a big set of forwards like Catalan have that extra carrier. But obviously, sometimes in defence he, he flies out, and we can't really afford that. So it's it's the, the toss of the coin. If if he's fully fit, I'd bring him back in. But if there's even you know the slightest doubt that he won't be able to do the 80, then I wouldn't risk him. Um, assuming he's fully fit after he's run out at the weekend, um, yeah, bring him back in at centre and put Hopper uh, on the wing. Any doubts, leave the back line as it is. Yeah. My my suspicion is that he's not going to be in the 17. Because even if he wasn't fully fit last week, would you risk him? And the yeah. potential of getting a ban in the reserves on Sunday, five day, uh, six days prior. I don't know. I could be, I could be wrong. I'm not entirely yeah. sure the, the full thinking behind it. It just seemed like an almighty risk if you were going to play him this week. Yeah, it's a difficult one to read. You could see it from both points. Then give him the run out to see you get through that those eighty minutes. Right, you're good to go for Catalan or um, give him the give him the run and think. Well, if we get to the final, he might be fit for the final, but that's a gamble because yeah. there's no guarantee we're getting there. And the good thing is, if we don't know, then certainly Steve McNamara certainly won't know either. Um, I wonder, Peter, but... whether it, it the plan is obviously it was never he's not he's not making the team this week. We knew by Sunday potentially that there's we've not got injuries for this week, so he's not so he's not going to play this week. But you need to give him minutes because mm-hmm. if we do get injuries in a semi final and we went on to win it, mm-hmm. the length of time between games means yeah. he'd be out. Of, he wouldn't be match fit. So you yeah. give him that game on Sunday, potentially in case 
in case you get to the grand final and you would need to draft him in. Yeah, I, I can I can see the sense in that. I can also see the the sense in him potentially being included on on Friday night as well, purely for his carries out of defence. Because I think potentially we might need that. Um, obviously, John Benison and um, um, Hopper don't have that in their armory. They have got other skills, but they don't have the the strength of carry and the ability to make more meters after contact that Big Connie has. And the my, the only thinking might be that that's what maybe sways well to bring him in just because he can do that. And I think we might need that. Otherwise, we're not making many do, meters off a defensive set. Do they make a better combination, Peter? Do they make a better combination though? Um, I think am I right in saying that the last time Hopper and Connie played together was in the defeat Catalan at home, where yeah. we blew it in the last minute when we should have won that game. And we Which, won yeah. France. Of course. There you yeah. go. I mean, it's Connie's fault that everybody is having to spend loads of money to go to France and have a lovely time in 27 <laughs> degrees heat and enjoy a lovely weekend in Perpignan. Yeah. But I mean, Connie... I think I was, defensively that night, though, we did okay. Um, and that's worth mentioning as well. Um, it was just, you know, a game of very, very fine margins. Um, I think we'll need to trust Wello in this. Um I think they'll probably know right now what he wants to do. Um, but I'd like to see him in. Personally, I, I yeah. prefer Connie in the team. Yeah, because he brings... It's the carries out of defence. Otherwise, we could be making 20, 30 metres maximum and then having to kick from our, our 40 and then, you know, have more more territory pressure. Uh, on he us. brings you more uh, attacking threats as well. And that, that it gives you that as well. Um but I think in this type of game, you know, it's going to be about holding on to the ball, making the making the hard yards out of defence, breaking tackles, um, and trying to get you know get you know win the collision, either get a quick play of the ball or get a six again. And I think that's where that's what he brings us. And I think you know if he is as close to hundred percent fit as he can be, then I would certainly I would certainly play him. And that's no slight in John Benison. Um, but I think it's horses for courses for a game like this. It's who's the best 17 to win it. And I think our best 17 certainly includes Conrad Tuttle. Yeah. Um, I think the ones who definitely miss out for me are Ben Davis, yeah. Sam Royal and Matty Foster. And then yeah. it's one of John Benderson, Will Opawati, Connie Harrell. Yeah. Uh, I think the Hopper will play regardless. Um and I think I think Connie will probably get the nod, but we, we shall see. Yeah, right. Catalan squad, um, probably as pretty much strong as you can get. Tough, yes, goal, uh, tough sledding. It's, yeah, it's it's a, I mean it's it's a it's a fairly awesome uh, collection of players. There, you look at that and you, there's quite a few there. You think, you know, they could. They they'd be very very welcome at Saints. Obviously, they're number eleven for a for a for a start. Um, but uh, joking apart, you look at the you look at that team. You think there's a lot of guys there. You think, yeah, I'd quite like them at Saints. And that you know, and you have a, a kind of not a fear, but yeah, you, you, a, a concern that you know there's a lot of players there can cause us problems. Um, there's not many weak links either. I think that's the that's the the telling thing about that squad as well. There's a lot of guys who've been over the course, you know, in Super League and in the NRL and at international level, you know, um, this is that's a serious, serious squad. A squad that, if they were to beat us, I'd fancy them to, to win the final as well. Yeah. I think if they beat us, they'd probably definitely be favourites over Hull KR, wouldn't they? Well, yeah. I mean, obviously, Hull KR are a very good, uh, very good free-flowing side. With players that can cause damage from from you know, you know going the you know from their own goal line almost going the full length to score score tries. So, yeah, that would be that would be a, a very interesting matchup. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> right, predictions, Peter. Oh, I can't. Well, with all sincerity, come on here and predict a Saints defeat. If I ever was going to, this would be the one. But I'm going to go for a Saints victory by a solitary point. Like Penrith with a Lewis Dodd drop goal. We'll take that in a heartbeat, will we not? Yeah. Your nerves will be shattered, but we'll take it. Listen, I'd take nil-nil in game abandoned because Catalan have had 
half team sent off. <laughs> um, and we we prog- progress by default. Um, <laughs> I think we go in hope rather than expectation. Uh, my concern is we've we've talked all season about how we need to click an attack and the and the attack needs to get better and how the discipline needs to get better. My concern is that it hasn't got to the level needed to win a semi final at this of this magnitude. But this is Saints, and we know they're more than capable of turning it on. So the head says Catalan. I can Heart accept that. Saints. Yes. Um, yeah, I, I, I see. I see right where you're we going. Can go from. either way. Yeah, and I think it's as I say, Saints have been over the course. We know how to win these big games, and. It's unlikely to be a free-flowing, high-scoring game. Watch it, watch it be a 32-31 yeah. now. But um, I don't think we're going to have to score bucket loads of points to win this. This is going to be, I think, a fairly tight game. Um, I don't think it's going to be, you know, try after try after try. It could be like a, I said one point, it could be like a 17-16 or something. It's not... I think, a, I think you need I think you need 20 points to win. If you if you're not scoring twenty, I don't think you're winning this game. It's there or thereabouts, yeah. Obviously, we don't know the circumstances. What's going to happen? You know, there could be someone could get taken off injured. There could be an early red card. Um, they could, you know, there could be mistakes that lead to tries. So many variables. But honestly, any win for Saints is the win of the seat. And the fact out with grand finals and you know probably out with Penrith, the the regular round and playoff win of the past six, seven years if we can beat Catalan in France on Friday night. It's not impossible. I just hope the boys, if they're watching this, just go with the belief and knowing that everybody's behind them. Well, know listen, do you, know, do you know what? If you didn't think we were capable of winning, then it's an awful lot of money to spend knowing you're going to be defeated. Well, exactly this. And the fact that 800 people were more than happy to part with their hard-earned absolutely at the drop of a hat to go and watch this match. I think as well as the part that might well be, well, this, again, like last week, could be Rob's and Louis' last game and you want to give them the send-off as many Saints fans there as possible. But imagine, imagine how good it will feel on Friday night if we have gone there and managed to beat them. Um it, it, it's um, it's an exciting prospect, and I think um, speaking on behalf of the uh, Saltire Saints, we've already spoke about getting ready to push the button on Friday night to to get transport sorted and that for next Saturday, and tickets bought if it goes our way. We've done that the past you know the past six seven years, but ready to go. So we're hoping. Yeah, I'd be. I'd, I'd be. I'd be. Sl- I'd definitely wait till after the. Uh... The results is confirmed. Oh there was, yeah, yeah. There was at least a few hundred Saints fans who had already booked to go to Catalan prior to the Warrington game, who were might have been a little bit nervous at eight all in the second half. Yes, very nervous. <laughs> I will be honest. Once it went to ten eight, I knew the game was won. Uh, I left at twenty past two. Um, yeah, that was that was a good that was a good decision, wasn't it? Absolutely, yeah. I was halfway to watching us get spanked by Luton Town uh, when I was sat in the car on the East Lanks. Furiously booking four flights um, before I lost mobile signal. When well, I got well never mind. You had that. I was sitting at Fir Park watching watching you know, the game go on, basically be played until Celtic scored again. And um, bitter, me, never. And watching Saints on my phone at the same time. So, you know, I had, I had the, the nerve-shredding afternoon, like you wouldn't Peter, believe. Peter, can I just say... Obviously, when we came up to Motherwell to watch them, was it Parsic Fist? Oh, who was he playing against? We, we played. Uh, we played a game against St Johnston, which is one St. of the Johnson. worst. Games I genuinely while. thought that was the worst standard of football I've ever seen in my entire life. Yeah, that that, no, that and, game was horrible. But we're, we're we're certainly a much better outfit now, without any shadow of a doubt. And now I'm sat there watching this Everton team. There you go. The memories are flooding back. <laughs> <laughs> right, last one before we go. <clears throat> um, we better cover it. Yes. Uh, the Man of Steel nominations. It's good to see there's never any controversy when it comes to Coach of the Year, the Dream Team selection, Young Player of the Year, Man of Steel nominations. Everyone always universally agrees um, with all the 
uh, all the decisions that are made. It's great, isn't it? Obviously, it goes on the point scoring in each team's individual yeah. game. Um, generally, the teams who who get the points from each game tend to be the winning team. Generally, yeah. So therefore, it's no surprise to see the top three teams at the top of the table mm-hmm. with three nominations. Um, yeah. Listen, Tom Johnson, great player. Jack Wellsby, great player. Mm-hmm. Bevan French. Has he been Wigan's best player this season? It's difficult to say. Um, Wigan fans will have to tell us because I don't really know. No, I think one thing I would say in his favour is he's played in a few different positions. So to be consistent and consistently good and played on the wing, playing at fullback, playing at six, he must be doing something right. Um, just hope, you know, he's, he's, um, he's ball watching when it, hits the, when it hits the post. That maybe needs to improve still. Yeah. Who wins that award? We got. We would love to say it's uh, it's Jack, isn't it? But um, I've got a feeling it'll probably go Bevan French's way. But I want to be wrong. Yeah. Do you know what? I'm not going to get hit up about it. I don't really care. No, no I mean it's it's it, the the problem Saints have had, and I've said this I think before on here when it comes to like man of the matches and some of the, the players getting points because Saints are so consistently good. Players like Johnny Lomax don't get the points that he's due yeah. because like, Johnny Lomax is always good. Um, Tommy Makinson's always good. Percy's you always al- good. You could almost Lomax argue, always- you could almost argue, it's a surprise to see a Saints player in there, given how the points are often spread around the team. Well, that's the thing. If you've got more than one excellent performer week in week out, that's the problem you have. Um, I mean, obviously Wigan will argue that they've got other players that have played well. As well, Catalan. Uh, I don't. I mean, Tom Johnson's a, a wonderful, wonderful winger. Um, I, I knew that he, when he left Wakefield, you know, it would be a great success wherever he went because he's he's just he's just got something about him. Um, he'll just score tries wherever he goes. Um, but that's the problem with Saints. You know, people say you know, oh, you know, you've got Robes. It's always excellent when he plays. Big Al make, makes up the meters. You could you point to seven or eight players that week in week out for Saints. A high consistent level of performance, and as you say, one week Johnny will get man of the match. Next week it'll be Tommy. The week after it might be Robes. You know, so whereas Bevan maybe Bevan French three four weeks in a row for Wigan, and that that's the difference. Um, so that that that's the problem, and it, maybe that's when it comes to dream team dream team selections, young player of the year, coach of the year as well. And to be honest, the more that Saints are you know overlooked for things like that. I dare say coaches and players aren't really fussed about individual honours, but there might be a collective um, you know, irritation that they're not being recognised. And who knows if that helps galvanise them? That little bit extra gives that extra 1% of difference, then, you know, let's continue to be ignored. Yeah, right. Done and dusted. We will catch you all on Friday night from the south of France, hopefully celebrating a Saints victory or... We will have been knocked off our perch um ahead of next week. Um yeah. Whatever will be Le- whatever will be will be say La Vie. Indeed. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. I'd like to say that in French, but I'm not that good. Catch you soon. <laughs> Au revoir. Ooh. <laughs>